One of the most effective and subtle ways you can fish with a nib is to use a dry fly for your indicator. We call it a dry dropper. And you just tie on a big, fairly visible, high floating dry fly. You tie a piece of tippet on the bend of that hook and you put a nymph underneath it. Now you have to be careful, you can't use a super heavy nymph because it'll drown the dry fly. And this kind of thing works better, usually when there's a bit of a hatch going on, there might be a few fish rising, but when you know the fish are looking up at the surface or they're more active, it doesn't work that well in super cold water where you know the fish are glued to the bottom. I was hung up, and the fish ate it while, while I was hung up. That was weird. I was hung up on a branch, and I tried to tug it loose, and I got it loose, and there was a fish on the end that ate the nymph. Fat, fat fish. Wow, that fish has got some girth on him. Of course, the added bonus is that you might also catch a fish on a dry, and you get to use two different kinds of flies at once. Best dry flies to use on this are highly visible foam body dries. One of my favorites is the Chubby Chernobyl. It combines a foam body with a highly visible yarn wing, which shows up well on the water and sheds water with a single false cast. But any heavily hackled or foam body dry fly with a hair or yarn wing, like a stimulator or a hopper pattern, will work. Parachutes are also good in larger sizes. You can even use smaller dries, but you'll need to combine these with lightly weighted or unweighted nymphs like the pheasant tail. It's always great when things come together. When you get the fly, the rigging, and the drift right, you'll do well, of course, if you're fishing over trout. That's oh, a Hollywood. Is it a cutthroat? On the big nymph again. Hmm, that's a pretty fish. <sighs> wow, that's a hybrid? This video is made possible by Fish USA, America's fly shop. Visit us today at fishusa.com.